السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين The month of dua and the value of dua in this month and we spoke about what are the things, the etiquettes, the manners, the proper things that will allow our dua to be more likely to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just to summarize that, we go over just these points. First of all, we choose the best time for dua, like the month of Ramadan, the state of fasting, the day of Jumu'ah, the state of sujood, and the time between Al-Adhan and Al-Iqamah, and many of these uh, good times, at proper times and honorable times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described. And then to face the Qibla, and that's one of the etiquette and the manners of dua. To start with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al bad'u bil hamd, Allahumma laka al hamdu hatta tarda, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Starting with al hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising Allah and glorifying His, his, uh, uh, his names, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the etiquettes of dua. The other thing is to start with the salah upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, to, to, uh, one of the etiquettes of dua is also to raise our hands with dua. Because of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then when we stretch our hands to Allah subhanahu, Allah of his haya, Allahu hayyun kareem, will not let, let these hands come back empty. Allah subhanahu will respond to our dua and will put something, some barakah, some response in our dua, in our hands that stretched out to him. And then a dua of rububiyyah. Most of the dua in the Quran starts with Rabbana, 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 to, to acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Rabb. And this is something that will be expanded upon uh, a lot during the, the sessions of Shaykh Yasser, inshallah, about the manazil, iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een, the interpretation of Surah Al-Fatiha. And then jazmul mas'ala is to, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to link our dua bil mashia and say insha'Allah. You say insha'Allah in everything except in the dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and we would ask as uh, straightforward as we would uh, want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is also from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the heart has to be certain that Allah will respond to our dua. It's of the manners of dua is al-istiqanu bil-ijaba or al-yaqinu bil-ijaba. We know that Allah will answer this dua. And then istihdar al-qalb, the heart has to be involved. The heart has to be involved in the dua, and the dua should come from the heart. And that's why some, if someone takes a pamphlet or a paper and they read and recite or parrots back words they don't understand, the heart will not get involved. It's best to say your own dua, your own words, your own feelings put straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other thing is at tawassulu bil asma al husna is to mention the proper uh, and the beautiful attributes names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al ilhahu fi dua to repeat our dua as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the messenger of Allah would repeat this dua usually 3 times and then to conclude with the salah on the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so today we will talk about what are the things, the opposite to what we talked about yesterday, the things that will make our dua not likely, not likely to be responded to. The bad the things that will prevent the dua from being answered. And this is all from the hadith, the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam in the book of Allah. The first and one of the most important things that will, if we neglect to do, the dua will not be responded is when the heart is not present in the dua. The heart has to be present. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ud'u Allah. This is hadith. Ud'u Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. Wa'lamu anna Allah la yaqbalu dua'an min qalbin ghafilin lahin. Allah will not accept the dua. First, he said, make dua when you are certain that Allah is answering your dua. That has to be in the heart. The other thing, Allah will not accept the dua from a heedless heart. From a heart that's not involved in the dua, not connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second precaution or the second thing that we need to avoid as we are doing the dua is al-isti'jal. is to hasten the answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
What is al-istijal? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, la yazalu yustajabu lil abdi. Ma lam yad'u, a man, a human being, a woman, the slave, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dua will be answered, except for these three things. Ma lam yad'u bi ithm. Somebody would make dua for something evil. Allah will not respond to that. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhul qurba. Wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Allah will not answer a dua if somebody so oh may Allah uh, ruin that person's uh, property or may Allah you know uh, uh, separate between these people or whatever. The dua of ithm will not be accepted, will not be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma lam yad'u bi ithmin wa ma lam yad'u bi qati'ati rahim. Someone would make a dua and for that dua the the bonds of kinship will be broken a dua that will make families to be broken allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not answer that dua and then the third thing wa lam yasta'jil and if he doesn't hasten and at that point the sahaba the sahaba understood the first two er, er, uh, questions the first two manners al ithm wa qati'at ar rahim very clear but they did they asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kayfa yasta'jil how come someone who will hasten and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained yaqul qad da'awt wa da'awt wa da'awt fa lam yustajab li if someone said i've been praying i've been making dua i've been making dua and our dua is not being answered and that is al isti'jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to be certain that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Id'uni astajib lakum, when we make the proper dua, Allah will give us istijaba. But it's not on our agenda, it's not on our calendar, it's not on our timing, it is the timing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah decides when to respond to that dua and when the fulfillment of that dua and Allah knows what is good for us and when to give us that good so he said someone will do that isti'jal will say I've been praying I've been making dua I've been making supplication and nothing has been nothing changed in my status nothing changed in my affair nothing changed in the ummah affair you know we've been you say we make dua upon the zalama and the zalama are still there the transgressor is still there and that doesn't mean the dua is not being responded to, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer the dua, especially from al from especially from the ones who've been wronged and transgressed upon. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُوا الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُمْهِلُهُمْ لِيَوْمِ Allah will, will, will wait for the day, the proper day, where He will take that zalim, and where He will respond to the dua of al mazlum and then he said the person may actually leave the dua. If someone hastens, if someone goes in that state of stajal, they will stop making dua. If someone get that in their mind, that I have to get the answer to my dua in a certain time, and if they don't see the answer to their dua, they may not make dua. And dua is ibadah. Dua mukhul ibadah. Dua huwa ibadah of the hadith. So someone will, will have put themselves in that state of mind, they would leave a great great act of ibadah behind them and not do it. The third category that will prevent the dua from being answered is al-ma'asi, a sin. The sins. The sins will prevent the dua from being answered. And the Prophet ﷺ specified certain th sins that will definitely prevent that dua, prevent, Allah, prevent the dua from being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first one is aklul haram. Is if someone have haram, gaining haram money coming to them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. The hadith is a little bit long, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah is, is the most of pure. And he will not accept anything, but it is, it has to be pure. And then he mentioned a person, yutilu safar, traveling distances, to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like somebody maybe would go to Umrah, maybe would go to Hajj, maybe would go to the uh, Masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Take all that hardship just to get there to make dua. Yutilu safar Ash'ath aghbar. The safar that traveling made that person very weary, very tired, very uh, ready to, for, for, for that dua. And then he said, Yutilu dua. And he would make that dua, long dua. And then the Prophet وسلم, said, مَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامُ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامُ وَغُذِّيَ بِالْحَرَامُ His money is haram. His food coming from haram. Or eat something haram. 
and then his clothes is getting from haram. Anna yustajabu lahu. No matter the, all the effort. This is a parable that the Prophet wasallam said. It's not the effort of the dua. We have to watch all these other sins. We have to watch all the other ma'asi. The second important sin that will prevent the dua from being answered. And this is something that is really important on the level of ummah. Because sometimes we, we make dua and we say the ummah is in bad shape. The ummah is in difficult time. The ummah is in dire straits. And why is the dua is not being answered? Well, we listen to this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, أو لا يشكن أن يبعث الله عليكم عذابا ثم تدعونه فلا يستجاب لكم. The Prophet ﷺ said you have to do this thing. الأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر. This ummah was sent to mankind to do this thing. الأمر بالمعروف to enjoin the good and to prevent evil. And when the ummah, when the when the when people leave that. When the nation, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, leaves Amrun bi ma'roof wa nahyan an al munkar, they are not khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas anymore. Because Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas, ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna an al munkar, wa tu'minuna billah. You are the khayr ummah, the ummah that brings the most good, the best, the best khayr, you would be the best ummah that mankind ever known. If you have Amr bi ma'roof wa nahi an al munkar. Here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When you leave Amr bi ma'roof and nahi an al munkar, Adab will come. Hard time will come upon this ummah. And then you will supplicate and pray and make dua, and nothing will be answered. Nothing will be answered because of the sin of al tark al amr bil ma'roof wa nahi an al munkar. So, brothers and sisters, when we make dua, we need to take all the things that will make our dua more likely to be accepted and leave all these ma'asi and all these sins that will make our dua less likely to be accepted. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our siyam and our qiyam and our dua and to make us of those when they make the dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.